Inspired and tired, that's the gist of our podcast. Inspired, but we're tired. Should we create or should we take a nap? Create. Nap. We should definitely nap. Chase, we're doing the show. That's right. Of course we're doing the show. Yeah. No, that's what I said. That's what, yeah. Inspired and Tired with your hosts, Chase and London. Hello uh, Hi, there. everybody. Welcome to another episode of Inspired and Tired with your hosts, Chase and London. If you're new here, we are sisters who are both in creative fields for professions. Absolutely. Well and done. we wanted to do this podcast because we're always talking about ways to be creative and um get unblocked yeah i feel like you're in your like high-pitched voice like when you answer a phone when i talk to a professional hello (laughs) (laughs) but did i tell you i was um on the phone with um i was booking a hotel okay oh oh. and she needed me she was like do you also want to rent a car and i was like yeah and she was like can i ask how old are you oh no i said 32 you should have said 65 I (laughs) i said 32 and she was like oh i thought i was talking to a 14 year old oh my gosh <laughs> i was on the phone and at the end of the call they're like would you stay around we have a special offer for you and i listened to this offer and midway through i knew they were going to try to sell me on something i didn't want mm. and i viciously like googled ways <laughs> to like kindly say no to like a telemarketer <laughs> And at the end, I like literally had to read the sentence like, no, thank you. I am not interested in your offer. That is it. Like, oh, I thought it was going to have you say, I'm sorry, I'm underage. Oh, that would have been better. Oh. <laughs> My mom is not My here. My mom isn't here, so I can't tell you if I want to go to Myrtle Beach next week. <laughs> well, um. I was I was just, I was doing, I guess, my high-pitched voice, but I was trying to say we've been going through The Artist's Way, which is a book a spiritual path to higher creativity and London and I have done the artist way so many times and we love doing it together and we wanted to do it with you so we are on week six yeah chapter six and this is not easy like the artist way to get through the whole book it is tough so if you've made it to chapter six with us well done well done if you haven't uh, that's fine that's okay that's okay it's hard (laughs) But, but maybe go up. back. Yeah. So we've been having like guests interspersed between the chapters to give you more time, a.k.a. give us more time. Exactly. <laughs> so keep listening. Keep doing the book with us. And if you don't do the week, go back and listen go, to the previous week. Go back week. and do the other week. So make sure you like, subscribe, do all the oh, things. Yeah. You know what to do. We'd also love, I personally would love it um, if you would go on to podcasts and write a review. That sounds great. Okay. Wherever you listen. Wherever you listen. But I think specifically the podcast app, you write a review. And Have get... you ever written a review for a podcast? Yeah. Uh, probably this one. Yeah. My review might be on there. <laughs> it's easy. So It's easy. Five it stars. Out. Five stars. And easy. Then... <laughs> done and done. And on to the next It's episode. just a way to get it. Um, I think it just really helps the show. If so you thank that. you. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. But how are you doing today? You drove in such traffic to get here. Yeah, it took me an hour and a half. Okay. And um, that's just L.A. to L.A. Just wow. one part East of L.A. To, West to side, another baby. part of L.A. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Traffic in L.A. is real. It is. Um, but I'm good. London brought us wine. I did. Cheers. Cheers. And, you know, we haven't drank on the show. I know. In a minute. In I a don't minute. think since we celebrated with Miss uh, Sarah. Oh, did we so. drink a Sarah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. So, Cheers. And yeah. we have Alex and Jack in the booth. Helping us out also today. Also drinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with that, with we are going cha- to tackle chapter six. And this honestly is one of my favorite chapters of The Artist's Way. It has helped me so much because growing up, it's all about abundance and recovering your money. sense of abundance. Money. money. Everyone loves money. But we grow up with all these ideas and conceptions surrounding money that can be very, very negative. And I feel like my whole life I had trouble with it until doing The Artist's Way. 
So really, absolutely. I, I think we probably both. I feel like I've had trouble with like a positive mindset with money. Yeah, it, it's like going from that sense of not having enough to having more than enough. That is so. It feels hard to change, but in reality, it is something you can reprogram your brain to do. And wow, this is an important chapter. It's an important You're chapter. This chapter changed your life and one, viewpoint on money. One million percent. So buckle up, listen in. Yeah, okay. it's a good one. <laughs> okay. So recovering a sense of abundance overall. By the way, I feel like I'm usually the one with all the notes. And today London has typed up notes front and, and back. And written notes. And written. So, so I'm very excited. We're clearly. both well versed on this chapter. Yeah, I I just love it so much. So okay, well, I'd love to see what you're gonna kick it off with. Okay. Well, I wanted to say like overall in the chapter we're gonna go through, kind of just some things we can do to start changing our mindset, and creating a more positive outlook when it comes to money. And one little thing that isn't in this chapter that I do want to kick it off with, is just a positive way. Anytime, I know we don't use cash anymore, but a little money hack that I like to do is anytime you pay with cash, you do it with the bill face up and in your head, you say, I have plenty of, of money to share and spare and you hand over your cash. And it's just like well, creating these little moments. Maybe with a credit card too. Well, yeah, true. That when always goes face up. Yeah. You just, I've got plenty, plenty of, of money, money to, to share, share and spare. spare. I like that. Thank you. Because I use a credit card way more than cash yeah. these days. Um, yeah, this and the reason I think the artist way is talking about money is because with creative careers and being art like in the arts, money and art usually doesn't go hand in hand in people's like mindset surrounding it. So yeah. this is a good chapter to start believing that if you are artistic, that you can make money doing it. And yeah, so you definitely can. Great. And it's let's, so funny because let's jump in. one of the first things, and Julia Childs wrote this. Childs? Wait. No, not <laughs> wait, Julia Childs. Wait, wait. We Julia love Julia Childs. Cameron, <laughs> Julia Cameron wrote this book. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if it was Julia Childs. I mean, it'd probably be a little more fun. Um, but <laughs> one of her first things she jumps into is, when we consider the lilies of the field... We think they are too quaint. I wrote that down too. Have you ever considered a lily in the field? Well, what does that even this mean? This is what she was saying. Yeah, tell me. She was saying that like when it comes to art supplies and like when it comes to like um, abundance in our art careers, that's not something God takes care of. She, says, she uses the word God a lot in this chapter as well. Um, that's not something God will take care of. God will take care of the lilies in the field. Oh, but not But us. it won't take care of my painting. Okay. And, and <laughs> she's saying that's not true. She's saying, um, I actually, I, what I wrote was, why would God pay for art supplies? Maybe a roof over our head, but not the frivolous stuff. And that's what she wants us to change. She wants us to journal about what a non-toxic god would look like because apparently the god that artists a lot of artists have is a toxic god that won't support our dreams beautiful did you read that part yeah okay. i read the whole thing okay i don't know. i mean i listened to the whole thing but. london listens and i read and, and the listening is a little abridged it is she says her who what when where and why <laughs> She does it all. She's with so annoying. That's why I can't listen. But she she also does this chapter. She uses the word stimmy a lot. And we love that when she did you notice all the stimmies? She, she actually said? didn't say stimmy once in the audio book. It's, oh. it's an abridged version of the chapter, okay. but I get it. I get it. Um, so, yeah, when we pursue our art, we feel like we don't deserve any sort of monetary income coming from that. We deserve money that comes from something more hard reliable, work. hard work. Yeah, getting putting the pedals in the metal. But if you're just painting and painting or acting in a play, yeah, it's not going to come. Yeah, but then she says, why would God, good orderly design, mm -hmm. be a not be a creative supporter when snowflakes? Oh, I love every this. single snowflake on this earth is a different 
design. And exactly. There's not just one pink flower. There are hundreds. There's thousands. I would say millions. Maybe millions. Yeah, I think there's millions of flowers All different kinds of pink flowers. And before we move on, when I think of that, I have always remembered this because I think of that when I'm comparing myself to other people who do what I do. I think of this too. And there is plenty of space for all of us in that world, whether I know there's not that many crochet yarn artists in the world, but there's some. And I'm like, oh, no, they're going to take my jobs. There's not going to be enough for me because there's another artist out there doing something similar. But no, I always have to remember there's millions there's of flowers. There's space for all of us to earn from what we do because I, and of that. I think of that, too, with comedy because sometimes I go. There's a lot more comedians than, than yarn, yarn artists. artists. Yeah. And I go, oh, it's already been done. There's already enough funny people. Mm -hmm. But there's, I'm so happy that there's millions of pink flowers. Same with me. Well, cheers to that. Cheers. So she says, um, snowflakes are the perfect example that this creator looks suspicious, looks suspiciously like someone who just might send us creative support. Hmm. Okay, so there we go. This has already gotten to me. I, I, I can you tell? I mean, no, but I'm in my head because I'm. You tipsy. seemed a little funky just <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Right well, from I the had lunch a today. long time ago, so this is really hitting me strong. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so go ahead. we feel like also when we're pursuing our art, we can't do it until we have enough money. Would you say like, oh, I would do this big crochet project if I had all the money in the world, yeah, and all the time in the world, then I would be allowed to pursue that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So. We have to change that. We can do it now. <clears throat> we don't need to wait for the money. That kind of is an excuse, I would say, a lot of times, too. Just being like, I yeah. can't because I can't afford yeah, to do she, it. Yes, yeah, she talks about that. Mm -hmm. um, but that might be on the next page. This I just wanted to jump really quickly. She also talks a lot about AA because she was in Alcoholics Anonymous. Not in the audiobook. Um, well, she brings AA up a lot. And she said that in AA, they're desperate to believe in a support of God. And when they fully believe in a support of God, all these like things start to happen. Um, creatives might not be that desperate because it's something it's in like the it's just like put aside. Mm -hmm. like, you don't really need to be creative to survive. And so creatives think of God sounding suspiciously like a flim flam man is what she wrote. Okay. I just Literally, wanted to the audio say book she for, put that. The <laughs> audio that. chapter for this book was maybe 15 minutes. I listened to it about four times. There was no flim flam man? She did not say flim flam <laughs> I, once. I had to I had to write it down just so just because it's so ridiculous. I've never heard of a flim flam man. I think of someone at a car dealership that's oh, just yeah. flim flamming. Flim flamming away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was one of those at the wedding I was at this weekend. No way. Mm -hmm. A camping wedding. Mm -hmm. Had a flim flam man? Mm -hmm. huh. I was at a camping wedding. <laughs> I'm going to weddings every weekend this summer. <laughs> okay. Um, great. So, yeah, I think just like, again, I, I may be moving too quick yeah, for the chapter. Yeah, you might be moving too quick. Where, where are you going? Because my next thing is you want to be an artist, but God want. And again, God, we're, we're not religious. You, um, take it. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know. So okay. you want to be an artist, but the higher power wants you to wait tables at hash joints. Yeah, I wrote that exact Yeah, exact We're hitting thing the down. same thing. Because it was just too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, does she mean a hash brown joint, like a IHOP situation? Yeah. Where Where is that? Where did I write it down? Well, anyways. you. It, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, same. God wants us to work at a hash brown t joint. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> although that's a great option, it's you got to follow what you love. You have to be authentic. Mm -hmm. If you love hash browns. Work your heart out mm -hmm. at that IHOP. <laughs> I do love hash browns, especially IHOPs. Yeah. But. So she wants you to expect God. Uh, let's take a drink every time we say God. Fun. Fun. Boys. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
She wants you to expect God to be generous. Expect it. Thank you. Alex knows the rules. <laughs> and this is one of the things that I've definitely shifted is I truly believe that now. I went to this like talk at a co-working space. Maybe three people showed up and this woman was speaking on. You were one of the three that I was one up. of the three. Oh, I it was that. very awkward. I hate that. It's like going to yoga class today. There were two of us in Oof, the class. I hate I, it. I almost would have left, but then you can't at that you point. You can't leave. No. You can't leave the one person there. Ugh, I and thank that. God there was one more. If I was the only person in yoga. What do you do? It's so awkward. I just saw a video, though, of this guy who was the only person on an airplane flight because it was delayed. That seemed fun. I was one of like four on my way to Cabo. Yeah. Remember I filmed? It was Spirit. Huh. I was on Spirit. Interesting. I highly recommend Spirit. <laughs> when there's only four people on your flight. I love Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Can we get them as a sponsor? Promo code inspired and tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fun. Also, being the only one in a movie theater is very fun. I, yes. Yeah. So, okay, okay. I was the only one at this, like, well, there were three of us at this talk. And this woman poured her heart out. She had keynotes. Oh. She had things. It was going. And oh. something she always said stuck with me when it comes to money is that money is like a wave. You will earn money and then it will go away. It comes in and out of your bank account like this ebbs and flows and goes in and out. So just because sometimes it goes out, you have to truly believe that it's going to replenish itself and come yeah, back in. Yeah, but you're frugal. Yeah, I love a good deal. You're very like, oh, no, I don't want to spend that. That's Whereas true. I think you could be a little more like, I'm going to spend that because I know it's going to come back to me. Yeah, I need to do better at that. I was trying to. I'm great at just spending, spending, oh, spending. Yeah. And I need to do better about being a little more frugal. <laughs> well, so, OK, I was trying to be frugal. I'm getting married. And I was like, I can make my own wedding veil. So what do I do? You I went to Sheen. No, I you went did. to. I did. I first got she one She went to there. Sheen. Got a $3 veil. It was. Don't do it. Don't do it. Then I was like, I Googled and I looked up all these YouTube videos on how to make a veil. I go to the downtown garment district. I get the tool. I get the the lace. And then I put it in my car. I have a few minutes left on my parking meter. I go across the street to get a comb to stick it in my hair. I come back. I'm getting a parking ticket. Mm. 65 big ones so you're saying <laughs> i you're am saying spending more on a wedding veil now due to that parking <laughs> ticket you're saying the parking ticket is more than the wedding veil or you could have just bought a wedding veil. i could have with the price of the parking ticket now i am saving absolutely nothing i've been sitting here meticulously sewing and on that's lace. you trying to be all frugal i was trying to be frugal instead of just like knowing that i'm gonna spend money on a veil and it's and gonna the money's be beautiful gonna come back to me. i have plenty of money to yeah, I, I do believe that if you have this attitude of like everything's good I have some uh -huh. like I know that's not necessarily the smartest thing this but it's it, a, that's what but it's saying. a good attitude to have yeah. because um I I believe that I I do have friends we all know people that like count every single yep. like dollar and, and there's like, nothing wrong with that it's just a different mindset and I, it, I think it keeps you in the mindset of lack mm -hmm. so anyways she does talk about that yeah and, she, and this is actually a great segue because then she goes into um, luxury and she says it's very important to be luxurious and treat yourself and she's not saying treat yourself with Porsches and a movie theater inside your house I know where and this is going what is she telling us to do Remember, Raspberries. God is extravagant. Oh. oh. <laughs> God is extravagant. Cheers. <laughs> is that two, Chase? Because you repeated it? Yeah. Uh, one. No. Don't worry. There'll be plenty more gods. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, she tells us what well, little things bring you. Well, she says that too. But what little things bring you joy? Raspberries at the grocery store. I, to this day, I don't even like raspberries, but I buy them sometimes just because it reminds me of this chapter. Yeah, she says that, um, so basically she says, if you've been stuck, a little authentic luxury can go a long way because art is born in expansion, so it's critical to pamper yourself. She mentions a 10-minute bath, 
I have no problem with that. I actually have them all written down because she she goes by name. She says for Jillian, <laughs> a pair of trousers from a vintage store is luxury. <laughs> all right, Jillian. For um, Jean, a single a pair of jeans from a vintage <laughs> Jean, store. A single sprightly Gerber Daisy. Ah. Um, for Matthew, the scent of, of of real furniture wax. Hmm. Constance found luxury in allowing herself the indulgence of a magazine subscription. That's a cute one. So National they're just Geographic. Like little, I highly little things. Furniture, new furniture smell. Yeah, who's getting the raspberries though? <laughs> That's um, a little later. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, she does talk about raspberries. Just for the cost of one sixty nine in the nineties. Now it's probably more. I know. Um, you get. Luxury for the week. Well, I've actually this written down. She says you could get a teacup and a saucer for five dollars. How much is a going rate for a teacup and saucer these days? You wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I get them all at vintage stores, so they're about five dollars still. I think so. I think anywhere from five to thirty. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Um. But yeah. So, what is something you say raspberries is a little luxury? What's What's something that you would say besides raspberries? Is a luxury. A little luxury. You know, I don't order in food that much. And when I order in from this one particular spot. What's it called? It's a a crispy, crispy sushi. Crispy rice. Crispy rice. Yeah. Yeah. It comes in a pink box. Mm -hmm. It's such a luxury. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. I put, um, and this is from, because I've done this book since 2012 so i don't know what year i wrote this but i put flowers on my nightstand that's a great one um is a luxury definitely and i want to be better about like having flowers always yeah um because the ones on my nightstand right now are dead Mm. so i gotta refresh that but definitely yeah she's not saying she talks about this wonderful man she doesn't name him special Um, maybe she met him in aa yeah (laughs) he well he's a famous artist and he has been, he, she calls it um, artistic anorexia. Okay. So oh, yeah. She's, this. He's just like run that he doesn't have any creative inspiration. And she's like, yeah, but he has luxury. Trust me, he has all the money in the world. He's living in penthouses and whatever. But the luxury he doesn't give himself is time. Time with friends, time with family, time alone. And she said that's the luxury. biggest luxury that we need as artists is to give ourselves time and she said even if it's 15 minutes to do a meditation um and she said we need a little space of our own even if it's a shelf space time that's the luxury pampering that's the luxury it sounds so easy but i feel like literally if i just went out and was buying things that made me happy and i was taking baths all day what? Nothing's going to happen. I disagree. You, you... I'm going to tell an anecdote. Okay. <laughs> um, when I was I was uh, sick with COVID mm-hmm. three times. Yeah. And any time that's happened, I've had to be locked in my room. And I was forced to have a break. And this past time having this break out of it, already it just like literally for three weeks I haven't had shows I haven't been doing nearly as much you know I canceled everything and um since then I have I had a meeting with a big manager yesterday I have a meeting with one tonight I'm auditioning for SNL on Thursday yeah tomorrow um I'm I uh got booked in a college gig and these are all things, and I didn't do anything the last two weeks. That don't you think that says something? It does. I gave myself time. I gave myself like yeah, breathing room, and I feel like I could have been like very freaked out, like when's my next gig and yeah. what, what's going to happen. But truly, by giving myself that space that I think I really needed, so many things, things came, came into my life. That's beautiful. So it was a it has been a couple weeks of luxury in the sense of like doing nothing and I was able to like do a lot of meditation, a lot of goal setting and just time alone I think is a huge yeah. luxury. And all those things are very much in line with your goal. They're not like things that you necessarily don't want to do. They're all things that are 
Yeah, all you know, things that, that the universe was just like, here you go. Truly wanted. You gave yourself time. Oh my gosh. So that is isn't that um, inspiring, beautiful. Lyndon? It is. Thank you. Very inspiring. <laughs> I have one more thing on this page before I turn it. Okay. We blame being blocked on lack of money. That's what you were saying. That is never the case. We must choose to do self-care. We are not... Oh, I already talked about that. Okay. <laughs> we're not talking sports cars when she says luxury. We're talking time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I said it. Okay. Okay. Next page. Okay. Well, my next thing is our exercises. Oh, I'm... Oh, London. Or counting your money. I've got a couple more things then. Okay. Okay. Um, Chase, in a different life, I know we've talked about past lives before or whatever, alternate universes. Mm-hmm. But I've always imagined you as a teacher. And right now your teacher hat is on and you are up there in front of your class. Let's keep going. Okay. Well, you know, I used to play teacher growing up. Yeah. Yeah, you know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Was it first grade? Were you a first grade teacher? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what gives us true joy? That is the question to ask concerning luxury. And for each of us, the answer is very different. Oh, for Bernice, the answer is raspberries. So this is where we got to that. Raspberries. But, but that's different than like, what's luxury? What brings you pure joy, London? Joy. Mm. Well, that's a tough question. I, I do love when I saw whales in the ocean. <gasps> that was just... When did you see that? I saw them in 2019. Wow. And it... it March... And it mm -hmm. was magical. I was and you had pure joy. Pure joy. <gasps> I was in the moment watching them. It was a whole trail. Yeah. Watching animals. Yeah. Maybe you just need to take a trip to the zoo every month. No, that's sad. <laughs> that's different. These were in oh, the wilderness okay. or in their natural oh, habitat. We'll go on whale watching trips every summer. Okay, something like that. Yeah. I love that. Pure just joy. go to Malibu. Right. Oh, that's great. What about you? I put tea. Yeah. Makes me super happy. Um. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. Everyone's um, going to be different. Our years mom ago, I wrote textiles. ballet class. Oh, that was fun. I just went to ballet this week. Pure joy. You know what? Yoga. Mm. Pure joy. I've been doing... Even I, when you even have only when two people two, in a class. It really is so lovely. Yeah. Um, for Laura. <laughs> <laughs> what does Laura love? A dime store set of watercolor paints. For Kathy, it was a deluxe Crayola set. So just get creative. Yeah. Get fun, have fun with it. Get out there. Um, and then, oh, I wanted to talk about Alan for a second. Yeah, tell me about Alan. For him, music is a great luxury, okay? Oh, yeah, but Alan. Alan really, really, he was like, I want to be famous or nothing at all. And because, like, he wanted to be at the top, and if he couldn't be there, he wouldn't be anywhere near his beloved music. So he kind of gave it up, stuck and stimmied, Will you drink? I said stimmied. Yeah, sure. I did game. have this section in the audio book, I got to say. I don't know why stimmied didn't stimmied resonate with me the way it did with you. Stuck and stimmied, Alan described his block this way. I try to play and I hear myself and what I can do is so far away from what I want to do that I, cr that I cringe and then I quit. And I think that's very relatable. I do too. I think a lot of us like I'm. If writing, you don't have success, I'm done. I'm or out. Or even just like the idea of this screenplay I've been writing for so long. In my head, it's brilliant, mm -hmm. and actually putting it to paper isn't what it. It doesn't live up to the masterpiece right. in my. Head. Oh, I've had so many times with that. And so I think it blocks a lot of people from creating because it's not what they think is going to like or it turns paper. out to be harder a i feel like harder. it's like you have to work harder you're not immediately hitting it right the first time so then therefore you, yeah it's like oh well is this what i thought it would be in my head for so long probably not why so, am i even doing so this that? is what julia says yeah she says she told alan like you need music needs to be fun again it so right now he's like so angry with music and it has to be fun again. So she said, go out and buy um, records, records that you love. They don't have to be elite and like the Grammy nominated ones, like whatever is just brings you joy. And he started slowly by like just listening to records that brought him joy. And then he found himself one day picking up um, some drumsticks. And next thing you know, he's playing the drums oh, and Alan. having fun. So 
when you're feeling like, oh, this is such hard work and it's not what I want and I'm cringing at what I'm doing, it has to go back to fun. I Yeah, and this also, like, she talks about how when you are, like, successful at what you're doing even in a creative field, it can turn into work. So what used to be fun and bring you so much joy turns into your job Mm -hmm. and is therefore you don't treat it like it's the love of your life every day. You're going in and you have, like, I have to crochet. That's where I am right now. Yeah. And that's why this was so good and resonated with me is, like, we have to have fun with it again, even if you are doing it for work. So it kind of can play on both sides of that. Yeah. Beautifully said. I know. I got to make it more fun again. It's been fun, and I'm having fun, but I have to. I get stressed out. You know, that's something like with the artist dates. You're supposed to do an artist date every week. Which, if you're new and haven't read the artist way, it's each week spending like having a date an with hour your artist. or so with yourself, just doing something outside of your particular creative field. And she's also talked about like get and that's supposed to get creative juices flowing. And stuff like being in the shower, taking a walk oh, also. I got to tell you, okay, this one time I took an artist date. And where'd you take it? Uh, I think I went to like an aquarium in Brooklyn. This was a while ago. You love I sea love life. sea animals. You love sea animals. So okay. I went on this artist date. The subway at that time didn't have service underground. I The didn't, G train? It was like all the, it was multiple trains. Oh, okay. None of them had just service trying at to the see. time. Like, oh, I know those yes, Chase, the G train. <laughs> and uh, so I was underground for like 35 minutes, maybe. When I came out, I opened up my email. And I feel like enough time has passed in between this story. I worked at the Apple store at that time. And Lena Dunham, you remember her from yeah, Girls? Girls? Her, like, assistant I emailed me. I remember this. Asking me to, like, personally help Lena Dunham with her iCloud This was and big computer. news in the O'Donnell family. Oh, we were so proud. my <laughs> gosh. And they paid me as like a computer assistant to go and help her do that. And I was like... This was peak of girls, by the way. It was. And I was like, if I didn't take that artist date, I don't think my mind would have been in the space to have received that email. <laughs> I was so present. Uh-huh. I was looking at those fish. Wow. And when I came out, boom. You had an amazing email. Yeah. I I did a really bad job and they fired me after the first day, but I still got to do it. Really, London. It was so bad. You got fired. I mean, they never asked me back. I was so tired at that time. Yeah, yeah, you were tired. Yeah. Um, (laughs) um, And I was going to say with the artist date and getting creative juices flowing, Mm -hmm. my drive here, which we mentioned was an hour and a half. Yeah. I put on ABBA. You know the band. Yeah, of course. Great, fun band. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. You know. And um, I honestly, so many, because I'm trying to think of characters for this SNL audition, and just like being like in this state of just like fun, listening to music, so many ideas came on this drive. I'm so happy to hear it. And I forget where I was going, but I think that was You were coming here. <laughs> 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 oh right <laughs> no I forget where I was going with that story oh okay <laughs> well I think it was about being open to the forces because you weren't in your head about yeah. it yeah yeah if you need inspiration go on an artist date I think is what I'm yeah I'm saying too and if you do live in LA might as well use those car rides for a good reason yeah I do yeah. try to write when it like I don't I don't write <laughs> but I definitely a lot of it's like when those girls can do their me. makeup while driving oh, I, I do that oh I can <laughs> um last thing I wrote before we get to your questions mm-hmm. or the exercise yeah creative living requires time and space of your own oh I already said it I already said that Look at me. Look okay. At you. Okay. So our first one is counting your money. I did it. Yeah. Uh, it's not counting your money. It's basically um, you're supposed to go through. Be the aware. Week, this week, go through and um, every day write down what you spent money on, which is very eye opening because I did and I realized how many like Paramount Plus I was paying for. I canceled it. Um, 
and just like different websites photo bucket i'm paying eight dollars a what? month remember photo bucket uh, there is this darn subscription service counselor okay have you heard of this unroll me i don't know what yeah, it was called but i go and i'm like great it'll go through my thing i link all my bank accounts and i get to the last page and they're like sign up for th- our subscription to cancel your subscriptions it's so dumb and i said no i said no I would have said no, too. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped using Unroll Me. Okay. It was a subscription service. Yeah. It was like you had to pay. It's ridiculous. Yeah. A subscription service to cancel subscription service? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, Oh, my Yeah, so that's just an eye-opening exercise, and it was very easy because nowadays you can just look on your your online statements. Um, and every time we put those credit cards in, let's do them face up and say and say a positive money affirmation. Comes to me easily and effortlessly. Yeah, I have plenty of money to share and spare. Whatever your like m- mantra you want to surround. Yeah. Um, Did you find anything interesting by going through your payments? Well, I have had a lot of like large payments for travel. Because I, too, have to go to a lot of weddings. So there was a lot of, (laughs) there was a lot of, like, wedding-related expenses that were higher than other things. Hotels, rental cars. Absolutely. Flights. Absolutely. I just had to go to Chicago for work, so more flights, more hotels. It was just, like, a lot of travel that took up a lot. Guess how much my flight was to this wedding this weekend? To Sacramento. Was it Spirit? No. <laughs> okay. Two fifty. Seven hundred dollars around. It was like Napa drive. Two. It was a ten hour drive or an hour flight. Seven hundred. Seven. I could have gone to Europe. What? Did you buy it the night before? Pretty close. Jeez. Pretty close. I know. I this is the difference between us. I messed up. <laughs> Oh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. that's there on my okay. spending. That <laughs> is insane. I tried to have fun. I tried to and pretend I was in Paris. Okay. Because that's Outside where I would have been. camping in a porta potty It was a camping mm-hmm. wedding, and there were four, pot- four porta potties for 150 people. Okay. Paris, baby. And At I- least you didn't have a hotel you had to pay for or, like, other things. So I guess you could kind I of rationalize it. I spent $100 on groceries. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's, That's a not lot bad. Of Did you get them a wedding gift? I gave them $100 for okay. their wedding gift. Okay. I spent nearly $1,000. <laughs> okay. Anyways, that's okay. normal. That's normal. So, I have enough money to share and spare. Exactly. And so that's been, that's a big expense. Okay. Our travel. Obviously, like food is an expense. And I've noticed like gas and craft supplies. For you? Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed for me, it's like groceries, food. I really don't spend much on like things. It's just like food and... But according to the book... Food and travel. We need to do little things to pamper ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So. Which is, I think the biggest thing I took away was like giving ourselves time. That's like the biggest luxury. Okay, it is. So there's an exercise, Money Madness. Money Madness. Complete the following phrases. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you have are you looking at the answers? Don't don't look. Just top of head. Not look at what I wrote? Yeah. Oh. Okay. People with money are lucky. Yeah. I wrote the same thing. Well now I have to look well, to I read didn't... one to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> money makes people um wealthy. Hmm. What did I put? Stable. Okay. Stable. Okay, ready? I'd have more money if my rent wasn't so high. Oh, mm-hmm. I put. Oh, would okay. you, you, okay, you okay. share on the next yeah, one? Yeah, okay. My dad taught me money was it, um hard. Okay. To get. Yeah. Oh wow! Hard That's why these are my answers from like 2015. I. So you're in, saying you didn't do the homework? No, I wanted to do like rapid. Rapid. Fire. Okay. It's interesting that I had to the look same back. Thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My mom always taught me money, thought money was, wait, my mom always <laughs> thought money would. Uh, money would create success. It's okay. hard not to look at our answers. What did you really write? Um, important. In my family, money caused. Um, 
drama. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of these, so we don't have to do them all. Let's do a couple more and okay. then we'll move on. You can pick random ones. Okay. Oh, it's my turn? Mm-hmm. Um, if I had some money, I'd... <sighs> Good job doing random. <laughs> Why is this so hard? If I had more money, I would buy a house. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'd get a haircut. Ah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. If you didn't go to that wedding. <laughs> people think money is not... People think money is... People mm-hmm. think money is status. Like okay. someone's status. So pretty much with this exercise, we write out all these things that our beliefs are. And the goal is to change our beliefs into a much more positive outlook on the way we look at money. So believing there's always enough, believing that there's plenty to go around, believing that we are worthy of earning money is the way that it'll happen. And it sounds so silly and it sounds so easy, but it is totally true. I know I've mentioned on another episode, like I like to write positive affirmations as my passwords and I'm not going to like tell you my password, but a lot of times that affirmation is associated with money. And just to continually have like a specific goal of how much you want to earn, something that's always in my morning pages is I earn X amount of money this year. And you can write down a clear date. You can write down exactly what you want and how it comes. And maybe it won't come that year on that day, but give it time and continually say that affirmation and it happens. Like you got to transform those negative I don't know. beliefs into I positive. I definitely have negative beliefs. And I know. I, and you saying that, I go, I'm not going to do that because why? Because then when it when it doesn't happen, I'm going to be upset. But I've like done it so. I've done so many affirmations and so many like, I am skinny and like, <laughs> and like when it just like you can say it, but it's really the believing it is more than the saying it and it's that's true. why i think the like th- this chapter is really good about like i think more what i need to say is remember snowflakes <laughs> <laughs> remember that god <laughs> drink is very like creative and wants to support yeah. a creative career and that type of belief i think is easier for me than i have this because i well, don't i get really jaded There's well, it requires work and it is you almost have to like we've said fake it till you make it. But there is a uh, Bob Proctor. He's like, Mm -hmm. you know, a big guy in the money world. She was on The Secret in 06. Yeah. And um, (laughs) he has like YouTube videos that are literally like money affirmations that just repeat themselves over and over again. I am so happy and grateful that money comes to me in unlimited source uh, I can't repeat it now but over and over and it's like 30 minutes of this one affirmation and I would fall asleep listening to it every single night and or if I'd be out running like I just put on the affirmation over and over and over again and as silly as it sounds it's like you just have to like force yourself to change the way you think and yeah that is something that worked for me I don't know if I told you about my therapy session last week. <laughs> I, I can't keep them straight. I don't straight. think I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she told me that my addiction, I don't, I'm not an AA, I don't have a heroin addiction, I have an addiction to negative Tea. thoughts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> negative thoughts. And she said, at least if my addiction was heroin, I'd feel good for a minute, I I take negative thoughts over heroin. She said I've chosen the worst addiction to have. No. Because negative thoughts is just like so mean. Yeah. So mean over and over. And she said I have to like it's your ego trying to like justify something. So like you're not where you're meant to be. So your ego's like well it's because you're not good enough. It's because you're never going to. But it's this spiral that happens and it becomes a habit. And So I didn't tell you that I'm addicted to negative thoughts. So um, what I'm supposed (laughs) to do, (laughs) and this might be helpful for anyone that has negative beliefs. I have a lot of core negative beliefs that I have to work out. You're supposed to picture a stop sign 
um, like just stop the spiral when it's happening. Label what you're feeling. And most of the time it's going to be anger, shame, guilt, or fear. And then label where the sensation you're feeling it is. Like, like it, hands, hips. Yeah. I, I tend to feel like a uh, well behind my eyes as if I'm going to cry. But she was like, you could feel like a tickle in your throat or like feel, yeah, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Fi- figure out what you're feeling physically. And then the last step is um, ask yourself, what do I need right now? And it's either going to be, I need to take a hot bath or I need to set a boundary or I just whatever it is, take care of yourself. And those are the four steps that I'm supposed wow. to do. And how has it been going? It's very hard. Yeah, It's very hard to catch it in the moment. I can do it after and look back. But in the moment, I'm having a very hard time stopping this. You know, maybe remember my smile bands. Mm-hmm. It's like a non-complain bracelet. Anytime you start complaining, you switch your wrist you know rubber band or whatever from one wrist to another and at the beginning it's very hard to catch yourself doing it and you miss it and that's fine Mm -hmm. but then you start being more aware because you're physically switching it when you do remember Mm -hmm. so maybe some sort of like added physical yeah attention to it could help get a little bracelet yeah i have some smile bands running around yeah so that might help with my yeah you know, I, I have money thoughts yeah. I can add to the. <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything, but have you ever seen the movie Ghost? I know the song. Yeah. But no. <laughs> I bawled my eyes out. It reminded me because you said it wells up behind yeah. your eyes. I was like that for two hours. It's the saddest movie. London, and London doesn't cry. And I cry. don't cry She didn't in cry in the notebook. No. That's okay. a sad movie. Yeah. Wow. So... We're on to questions. We are on to questions. These this week's questions little, are more action yeah, steps. They're a little we easier. We don't have to answer much. No, but I did bring rocks with me. You did? Yeah. Pull them out. The first question says, find five pretty or interesting rocks. Oh, I left them in the car. That's okay. Oh, my gosh. I brought them all the way That's here. Okay, That's they were so really pretty. One them. was brown with a white. Sp- did you find them or you just had them at your house? I had two and I found three. Wow. Mm-hmm. Where'd you find them? On the, on the road. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I have, know we're special on the streets I of downtown have, LA. <laughs> I just have a lot of rocks or like crystals. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then pick five flowers or leaves. Mm-hmm. You, you did that too? You know, no. Okay. <laughs> I did something else. That kind of like covers a bunch of these things. And by the way, she says this is natural abundance. So she's trying to get you to be like. There's a thousand there's beautiful so pink many, flowers. There's so many abundant things around mm-hmm. you. So like rocks and flowers are abundant. So what I did in the in lieu of kind of like my artist date slash the picking of the leaves and stuff. I set up an herb garden outside of my house. Oh, look at that. I got a little brown you know, freestanding garden. Mm-hmm. I got basil, thyme, some peppers, How fun. some rosemary. I planted them all. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, today I got some insect repellent, organic, because they're getting eaten a lot. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. So that was your artist date. And that yeah. kind of is it like kind your of was the, I like picked out five different plants. and That's so fun. Know. Have you been using them to cook? I used the basil yesterday. Wow. And, and the mint. I had well, mint, guess what? mint water today. She did say bake something. I made curry with the basil. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's not baking, but I don't like sugar. I don't like sugar either. So, yeah, she said um, very often the act of cooking something can help you cook something up in another creative mode. What did you cook up? I didn't. But, <laughs> I, but I've been, <laughs> I made, um, I've, I've. I've made all my meals this week, oh, which I f- felt like was cooking. cooking, but it wasn't baking. She did say baking. Yeah. London and I don't really bake. No. I can't have a cake in my house. Today, I mean, I can't have that. I'm, t- I'm going to eat the whole cake. I can't have that. Um, today, I made veggies and farro, the rice. and um, If there's l- tofu, I'll say it's good, but so far, yeah. It wasn't that good. And then I made avocado, tomato, and cheese oh. and garbanzo bean salad. Oh, salad. I thought you were going to say sandwich. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> no. Um, but Very for healthy. dinner, London and I are getting sushi. So, so that'll... But, shout out. But I didn't make it. Okay. Nope. Um, anyways, throw out or give away five ratty pieces of clothing. 
Oh, yeah. I did it. I did a lot. I cleaned out so much mm-hmm. in my closet. There were so many things I was holding on to. Yeah. Because I felt like I had to. I got mm-hmm. rid of them. Me too. And there was actually a lady outside of Goodwill who was asking for clothes. And it felt very good to take some clothes out of the bag and actually give them oh. to a human. It was very nice. I just did. They have these little drop boxes in Santa Monica. They're just like, you don't go anywhere. You literally just like put the clothes yeah. in the box and it's done. Easy. Easy. Mm-hmm. And then I have some nice clothes that I, I still have to give to like Buffalo Exchange. Don't do it. I know, but they're too nice. I could make money from it. They're Christina keep, P's clothes. Keep us posted. It's going to get some money. I took some of her clothes over there. And then... They're very picky. They're very picky at Buffalo Exchange. And they make me feel bad about my wardrobe. Me too. They make I've never felt lower I than know. I ever have in my when life I have, in a Buffalo Exchange. They're like, we bought one thing from you. Would you like the $5 or $10 <laughs> store credit? And I go, give me the $5. Yeah, <laughs> I go. No, you, you know my, my joke. <laughs> Tell us. Could this be a character for us now? No. The we, Buffalo Exchange could, buyer. It, that's it should be. The Buffalo Exchange buyer. Yeah. Basically, I just, it's pretty much that. That like yeah. anytime I go, it's like an hour of them looking through uh-huh. every There's single. There's always such a long line. And they take so long looking through every item and then like, we don't want anything. anything. We don't want one thing from here. But it makes me feel better about giving stuff away. Okay. Okay, fine. But I, I think you're right. I'm going to do a Buffalo Exchange buyer. Yeah, that could be fun. Okay, that's fun. We'll workshop it over Sush. Okay. <laughs> um, send postcards to five friends. That is not a goody two-shoes exercise. <laughs> send to people you would love to hear from. So, I just had my bachelorette party. And I have written out little thank you cards for everyone. London. Mm-hmm. From Chris Harrison. You no, should. from me. <laughs> London's that theme been of cute. the bachelorette party was, was the bachelorette. The bachelorette. And um, Chris Harrison left some notes for everyone to Mm -hmm. go into the fantasy suite. If they would expect. If they wanted. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do this once daily. Reread the basic principles. Those are way back at the beginning of the chapter. If you wrote written an artist prayer as well, just something for yourself, that's good to recap too. Should I read them? No. No. What page is it on? It's time for that. Um, Page three. Okay. Page three. Page three, reread those. They, I'm going to read one. Fine. Creativity is the natural order of life. Life is energy, pure creative energy. Creativity is God's gift to us. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a thing. Okay. Okay. And practice saying yes. No. You missed... You missed one. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It does say that. Okay. But before that, any new changes in your home environment, make some. So that too is with my garden outside. It, it really couples a lot together. But I spent a few hours out there and I it was cleared. lovely. I also painted a picture. Oh. A flower Blended painting is so in creative. my garden. I've never met a more creative person. Oh, thank you. Um, I cleared out my junk drawer. You know the junk <laughs> drawer in every kitchen? Oh, yeah. Cleared it out. Hmm. How um, much did you get rid of compared to keep percentage-wise? I've been I, watching Hoarders. I kept, oh, my mo- gosh. I kept most because I share it with my roommate. Oh, okay. So I didn't know. Yeah. I just, like, organized it mostly. That's nice. Okay, you practice saying yes to freebies is what it says. I did it today. Tell me. I went to Starbucks. I actually have a green tea for you in the car. London. I know. I forgot. The second I saw you, I was like, we're running late. We got to go. Uh, so there's one sitting I'm there. I'm not going to want it. I know it's hot, but guess what? They accidentally made it cold at the beginning. I hate cold green tea. Makes me sick. She throws up. Yeah. But I said, sure, I'll take it. So I have a cold green You've tea in the back seat and a hot green, green tea in the front seat. London. <sighs> <laughs> They're not good after this long. We'll see. In the car? <laughs> I mean, I said yes to the, freebies. In the summer heat? <laughs> I parked in the shade. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, last but not least, mm-hmm. any changes in your financial situation or your perspective on it? Any new, even crazy ideas about what you would love doing? Pull images around this and add to your image file. Well, changes. 
So <laughs> I'm freelance. It goes ups and it goes downs. Like I said, it was very good at my little talk a while back. It goes up and down. I've been in a little bit of like a plateau space where I'm in between projects and I freak out. I know, but what's so crazy is you work so hard and I'm always like, how amazing that you get a break. It's great. But that you just don't know when the next yes. thing is. Yes, and coming. I have a lot of opportunities and I'm super grateful for that. But I this chapter has been really wonderful to read at this time. Mm-hmm. Just because it does remind me to like believe and stay positive. So I would say this chapter was a big change oh, when yeah. it comes to my outlook. Yeah, I would say booking the college show for me was a uh, positive and like, oh, look, one show. I'm I can where what college Marist College in New York, hmm. upstate New Poughkeepsie, September 9th. I'll be there. No, no. <laughs> the day after hannah's wedding oh um you'll be see in, more weddings more weddings um but oh you'll be you'll be in poughkeepsie yeah poughkeepsie? for brooke's wedding oh <laughs> september 9th <laughs> i thought you were just gonna come support no, oh, no, no wow i wish london and i always travel like to the same place like, like two a weeks week later apart. yeah we're it's weird like, no. yeah um that was a shift in money because it's just like oh just like that you book something and it's like oh i'm gonna have Um, money i feel a little better yeah if i booked one of those a week (laughs) hey i'm out of wine so so i'm not gonna say the g word but god it's possible honey (laughs) it's it's looking out for you stimmy so i think it you know believe it and achieve it and whatever they say yeah So. so um how many days this week did you do your morning pages? You, you didn't. I didn't. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. But see, we're real about it. You can't, if just don't stop the artist way because you don't do your morning pages. What I have been doing is this app called Clarity. And it it's like a little check-in journal on your phone. Uh-huh. And that's been a lot easier for me. I've done it with you before. You when, have when I was in a... A tizzy. A tizzy, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of been taking the place of my morning pages because mm-hmm. it's something easier for me to do. It's just on the phone. It walks you through guided journal prompts and tells you like, what are you feeling? What's another way to think about it? Like just it helps me. Okay. Um, next time we do this. Okay. Let's make a handshake right now. We're going to do the morning pages all week. Every day and discuss it. And see how we do. See it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. I, I think it, I think if it could be good. Maybe do the challenge with us. It's really hard, but I think we can do it. And it's I because the it last does thing help. I want to do in the morning is write. I'm so tired. I, I the idea of it. We were up at seven thirty this morning for we Zoom. Were, for we were Zoom. on Zoom at seven thirty. The two of us were on Zoom at seven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So if I can do that, if we can do that, I can get up and journal. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I'd love that challenge. It's possible. I love a good challenge. And I'm excited. This was fun. There's a new season of Bachelor that's been on. It's great. I, yeah, I don't know if anyone's watching. It's it's pretty great. A while back, there was a crazy submarine situation. Mm-hmm. That, that was, was that so was crazy. entertaining. Yeah. Sad, yeah. but entertaining. Sad, entertaining. And, and uh, uh, yeah. we'll see what we'll else. We'll see what else. Are you doing a bit for <laughs> SNL? <laughs> I'm excited. Next time we chat, you'll maybe have an update on what characters you did. Oh, yeah. I can. Yeah. I can tell you, you can what give characters us a little I insight. did. Okay, great. Okay. Well, okay. this was fun. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Follow, comment, all like, the things. Surpri- we really are so, so grateful for everyone that's been listening. We really are so grateful. Is that what I said? No, like? not at all. <laughs> For me, I, I feel like you don't I'm sound, talking down here. You like, don't. I think I'm talking like you this. don't sound like that at all. Okay, I was okay. just, I was just doing a character. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're really grateful for you for listening. Thank you. Okay. All right. Happy money, people. Happy money. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>